Yeah, welcome everybody to day 15 <laughs> of the Lead 21 Day Leadership Program with Dr. Sanjeev. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I was just talking about my mentor who's just going to join us on the call very soon. His name is Dr. Rajiv Naidu. And uh, he's the one who, from whom I, I use a lot of body sensing work in all the therapies which I do. Body sensing is about, it's very simple. It's the simplest of all therapies. All you have to do is, you know, get connected with your emotions and, uh, you know, connect your body and watch what happens. It's as simple as that. And uh, we have one more, one more physical trainer, expert, sportsman, nutrition specialist, uh, exercise specialist here on the call, who is also a mentee from Dr. Rajiv Naidu. He's a very, very good friend of mine. He's also a model. He's also a football player. And uh, he's a brilliant guy. His name is Vishwajit Matkar. His wife is a dietitian. Her name is Geet Matkar. So Vishwajit is just joining us on the call. He's connecting to the audio. He's just joining. <laughs> I'm very, very excited to have Vishwajit also here. Hi, Vishwajit. How are you? Oh, there's a very interesting option that I just discovered on the Zoom where you can click and ask, just by clicking, you can ask them to start their video. I didn't know this option existed on the Zoom before this. And man of the hour is here. Dr. Rajiv is here. Superb. So, so happy to welcome uh, Dr. Rajiv Naidu. Hi Rajiv sir, can you hear us? Rajiv sir, are you able to hear us? Yes, yes, I'm able to hear you very, very clearly. Okay, so I am just muting everyone and uh, except Rajiv sir. And uh, so Rajiv sir, we are doing this uh, 21 day leadership program. Awesome. And, uh, people here have been every day, 8.30 PM, we get together. Okay. And uh, there is a book club which we are doing. The book is yeah. about the book is about how you can have you know oneness with the body, how you can have how you can honor your body, how you can listen to the body. So what we do, we read out the book. I'm, I I make my Kindle appear on the screen and we read. I either I read the book out or I invite special guests to you know read the book out. And today's chapter was about what your body would tell you if you would listen to it. And then I wow. remembered you. I thought of you and I remembered the core somatic integration uh, that you had taught me. Yeah. And uh, okay. I just want to share with you that in a lot of my therapies that I'm doing, I'm using a lot of core somatic work, body sensing. In yesterday's call, we all of us on the group, we did that body sensing. And oh. you know, when we began, somebody had a headache. At the end of two to three minutes of the, you know, connecting with the body and being aware of sensation, the headache kind of changed immediately within two minutes. Somebody's stomachache went away, right? And I have been doing it. My shoulder pain, which was there, that went away. So we've been having some really interesting, fantastic results. And Mm. I've been telling them that you've been my mentor. You're a a uh, hypnotherapist. He's a doctor. Rajiv is a homeopath. And uh, he teaches Tai Chi. And uh, he is a wellness coach. And he's uh, based out of Mumbai. And... He's an ACA trainer for hypnotherapy level one, two, three, I guess, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? yes. And we are very honored to have him here. He's an amazing person, amazing coach and a therapist who does brilliant counseling sessions. A lot of counseling methods I have learned from him, which I use with my clients. And I'm very, very happy and proud to introduce Dr. Rajiv. Dr. Rajiv, please tell us something about you and what you stand for. You know, we know you're in the space of contribution. What would you like us to know about you and your work? Just, just so, yeah. Yeah, hello. So, first of all, thanks a lot, Sanjeev, uh, to have me uh, on this call. Yeah. And I'm really overjoyed. 
whenever I see you putting out so many meetings out there, it's like uh, not just meetings out there. What you're doing actually is connecting. You're bringing in so many people together. It's not just today or this 21 day, but last one year I see that you have been trying your best to have people and you being with them and uh, especially the trainers, the teachers from different parts of the world. So that's like a brilliant job that you're doing. And I would also remind you of my dream for you. So I always, uh, always mention this, that I'm very glad that you are taking up this sciences, the holistic sciences, the, the so-called alternative sciences. I don't believe that they're alternative, by the way. That's why. So just, the holistic... You, just that your, your audio is a little low. Maybe you can hold the mic a little closer. Okay, just see now. Is this, is this okay? Yeah, if can you, you hear can, me? If you can hold the mic near, that would be awesome. Okay, okay, just in there. Yeah, so let me check. Is this good? Yeah. Can you, much yeah. Can you hear me now? Much better. Awesome. So I, I would like to remind you of the of the conversation that I, we had, or maybe also on the phone that I keep mentioning, especially uh, you being a doctor and a doctor who's passed out of the MBBS and who's done the MBBS and also taking up holistic. So this is the kind of, this, this are the kind of people, like you are the kind of people who will actually make the difference in the world. The reason is that there are two parts to this. One is the holistic side and one is the, the, the allopathic side, which the ignores the body because they're going directly to the symptoms and they're ignoring the mind and the, the, the body part of it. The body part is also seen just as the symptom, the disease area, right? So here is someone who's actually making that, that connect of both, both worlds. And that amalgamation, that combination is something that the world requires now. So I'm, I'm really glad that uh, you're doing that. And not just hypnotherapy, not just somatic, but you're picking up everything as much possible, the access and everything. So it's amazing that your, your hunger for not just regular knowledge, but knowledge of the other side of the world. The real curative science that is really worth mentioning and worth acknowledgement. Thank you so much for that. And I just want to tell people that, you know, how my journey began, how my journey with therapies and everything began was I was in my first year of MBBS. And uh, I started dating somebody and there was a breakup. So yeah. I, after my breakup, I, okay, wait. Um, yeah, I just muted the others. Yeah. So after, after, after my breakup, I was just wondering, well, what the hell do I do? How do I manage all these emotions and everything? And that was when somebody on some WhatsApp group, they put this workshop with Rajiv Naidu. And I just go to Andheri and I'm like, I was floored because... For the first time, somebody taught me how to, how to actually be present with my emotions and how do I deal with them. Then mm. in the hypnotherapy course, I learned the whole concept of physical suggestible, emotional suggestible, which are like personality types. And that really explained everything for me. Every, every mm. doubt that I had about relationships went away and I actually got clarity. Then I took a couple of sessions, therapy sessions for myself and things just changed. Then I was like... This is the space that I want to hold for other people. And I'm happy to tell you, Rajiv, sir, I am doing a program that is called Breakups to Breakthroughs, which is a five. I, know, I, read, I read that, yeah. And uh, there are like 40 people on the, on the series who are actually, you know, guiding them through the five stages of grief. Oh, lovely. Oh, awesome. That's good. Yeah. So we are exploring five stages, that. Of, five stages of loss. Five stages of loss by, uh, yeah. you know, Elizabeth Kubler Ross. Kubler Ross, yeah. yeah. Good, good. Kubler Ross model. We, we, we want to, I would love for you to talk to us about the core somatic work that you do, the body sensing, the, you know, the work that you do. Do tell yeah. us about it. Yes. And also before that, you had asked me about uh, to introduce myself as to. Yes, please. So yes, you, please. I, I just want to complete that, that uh, you have already introduced whatever you had to and uh, 
as uh, sanjeev said i am a homeopathic doctor and uh, i have been practicing for last 25 years in the same place where i'm sitting near lokhandwala andheri and also uh, my journey began when i stepped into counseling and health psychology just to have a more understanding about hypnotherapy but i didn't know that something would transform like the way sanjeev is talking about his movement towards holistic therapies so similarly something happened over there 6 months down the line and that that journey has completely turned me around and then hypnotherapy happened neuro linguistic programming happened and of course tai chi was always there and in my tai chi i learned my teach from my teacher on the very first day he said uh this is like moving meditation and it's easier for a person to go from the body to the mind than from the mind to the body if you look at all the meditations they generally try to control the thoughts look at the thoughts observe the thoughts but when he said this so i didn't know much about what it meant but of course homeopathy had given me the base of connecting to sensations so and from that day this journey about connecting to body experiences body sensations and then bringing about a shift in the mind and the experiences that is what started and it has been the journey i have been working on it all the time it's like a my myself i feel myself like a experimental lab and every day i explore something new about myself how to re- resolve how to release how to heal how to clear up how to build myself and that has led me to a lot of things and when I'm, and why i'm saying this because what i understand about uh, healing is healing cannot be just that you work on the mind and you heal something no i don't believe that completely and it's not just about counseling it it's a it's a combination of so many things the understanding of medicine the understanding of psychology the understanding of how your body functions and it's it doesn't have to be how the body functions in the way of uh Uh, the anatomy and the physiology not necessary but when you start observing your body you will start noticing a lot of things you start becoming aware of it's like if you read the earlier the ancient texts and all this say all you got to know have the knowledge about is about oneself and self knowledge is the most powerful thing and that struck a, a chord in me and from there the journey is such that i'm just connected to that and uh every moment i try to be aware and mindful about what's happening yeah it doesn't matter whether it's a it's a good sensation or a bad or not so good sensation and i observe it and i notice a huge change happening and thereby the memories are healed and that's how the whole journey is for me and that is what i have been sharing for last uh, 8 10 years with my the people oh, and that, that speaking of that that is something beautiful something beautiful that i really want to talk about dr rajiv is that this man really walks his talk you know he there was once once when he got some really you know terrible kind of a stomach pain or something like that and for like 3 hours he actually sat with it he sat with the pain he sat sensing the you know sensations of the body sitting with the pain until the pain went away you want to talk about that dr rajiv yeah and i would also like to talk about a bit going behind along with that yeah so i will also share this because this will make a lot of sense uh, how this whole thing started because when you're talking about the pain before that there was this point where i started and in, it was somewhere around 2000 2003 2004 in 2000 i did counseling and health psychology and suddenly there was a shift in me by the six month there is something more than homeopathy that i want to do and i want to talk to people i want to connect to people and something like that and uh, and i took the leap and i went and uh, i joined hypnotherapy and somehow after that i would just get into meditations close my eyes and i used to have a large number of people coming to me for homeopathy and it was like in that period of time in such a remote location for that period i was doing very well and i was quite known for that my work and but suddenly this shift in my thinking created a a gap and that gap was something that really helped me to connect to myself 
So I would wake up in the morning at around 2.30, like uh, I was staying in a house where I and my wife had a room for ourselves and my kid was there. And uh, I would suddenly wake up at 2.30 and then there would be an emptiness in my chest and I would wake up and I didn't know what it was, but there was it was very scary, insecure feeling. And I would panic. I would be anxious because I was deliberately losing on my business. I was saying, oh, no one should come. And slowly it was like having one client a day where I had 10 to 15 clients a day, one client a day, two clients a day. So money was not coming in. And a lot of things were not going right. And then a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear. And, uh, and I would get up and I would cry. And every day, I remember it was 2.30 to 4.30. It would be like a bout of crying. Then I would write down the put notes. things into to... context. You're a family man with uh, two children. And a yeah. Yeah, wife, two yeah. children. Yeah. So obviously, yeah, yeah. in such a situation, you might be, you know, you, you were facing. And that was the situation. Yeah. And... Uh, with this, and that is the time I, I would sit down and just observe what's happening in my chest. Because I'm no, not someone who take, take medicine so easily. And allopathic medicines is something that I've never taken. Yeah. So, uh, and there was a time by around 4 o'clock, I would notice that suddenly it would settle. And that was my turning point. That every day when I sat down, I would sit down it for some sit down with it for some time. I would write down something. I would notice my pain, and suddenly it would dissipate. And I was just wondering that: Am I imagining things, or what? Or am I creating creating things? But that kept happening. And then there would be a negative belief. I would started getting present to my belief systems, which were negative at that time. I would, and then I would see by the end of it, by an hour or so, half an hour, the belief systems would change. I would suddenly feel very positive. Then I would have good sleep. And slowly and steadily, I, I realized that there's something there that works, that changes, that shifts, that transforms when you're paying attention. to. Wow. And I was completely in touch with my teacher's words and voice, which is every day inside me, like be with the body and it will take you to the mind. That's the easier method than the mind to the body. Wow. And I always maintain that even today I maintain like every time I talk, every time I'm with the body, it is whenever I do my Tai Chi, I am always in gratitude to him. And thank you so much for saying that. And I remember Dr. Rajiv, in your core somatic uh, healing workshop that you were teaching, you told me once in some context, you said, Sanjeev, it is not a frozen shoulder. It is frozen emotions. Yes. And I sat with my father, my father who has frozen shoulder. I just told him this father, every day we will sit for 10 minutes and we will observe your shoulder. Okay. Oh. It has been 15 days, right? 15 days, his, his range of motion of the shoulder joint has improved by 90% just awesome. by us sitting together every day, observing his sensation in the shoulder. Beautiful. Do you, do you want to also, do you also want to tell us about, uh, you know, you had a case where somebody had hemiplegia, which means like lower yes. limb paralysis and just yeah. by core somatic something changed. Do you want to talk about that? Yes. So before that, I would like to talk, talk about this frozen shoulder. So I had this client who came in to me uh, for homeopathic medicines at that time. And uh, she had this frozen shoulder, right shoulder frozen, and she couldn't move it. And she said, you know how it is. It's very painful. And there was a minimal moment. And I said, okay, let us try. And though I gave her homeopathic at that moment, I just, I said, keep it aside and just focus on your shoulders and see what happens. And guess what? She started observing and there was a lot of pain. And since I have this understanding of Tai Chi, I said, just relax. Don't tighten your shoulder. And she kept doing it in the next 15 minutes. The shoulder range, the movement of the, the range was so much. And after some time, it just went up fully. And she's saying, Rajiv, there's no pain. How does that happen? So, and after that, she's never, never, ever complained of that. And it's way, it was way better. And of course, coming to this person, uh, so my, my trust in this work kept going up. And let me tell you, all of you, the reason I trust it so much, or I, 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 the reason I feel grounded in it, because I practice it daily. Yeah. Like even before coming over here, I practice it. I was practicing it. I have, I have seen lots of trainers and I can vouch that you're one of the most grounded people I know. 
and when i once i asked dr rajiv you know i called him aside and i asked him sir do you really practice all of this he said yes every day i sit for 2 hours and i practice on myself i do my tai chi every day and i do my meditation every day i practice my exercises and everything that was brilliant that really inspired me to walk my talk so thank you rajiv sir Sure, thank you so that's 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 the key the key is the key because i i realize one thing sanjeev everything that we do with the body or everything that you find anywhere in this universe about healing if you just connect to your body every word that is written in any book you'll find the answer there and you will exactly know the words also because these people who have written the books also have connected to themselves and there was one thing that i understood when i was giving an international i was uh, attending an international conference i was uh, 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 presenting a paper over there when i was reading up the thought that crossed my mind was how is it that all the people are able to connect to the same emotion the same feeling the same experience and the answer that came was the truth is always universal the truth is always one i can't have a different truth than yours unless it's a personal truth but the real truth is always universal gravity works everywhere that's you can brilliant. not say it will go again and there it does so so this is something that i really learned yeah so we we got to start looking at it like that yeah so only thing is that start connecting to once a rather than struggling with who's writing what and who's practicing what because the key is in connecting to oneself so I'm going to the case of hemiplegia so this person uh, 20 year old he comes in he was driving the car and suddenly he finds that he's not able to lift his left leg and he somehow picked up his leg in the car and put it and somehow he managed to stop the car and got down and then he couldn't walk and when he came to me he was one month he was trying whatever he was trying and getting the investigations done and then he was uh, told to take some three months medicine yeah by one of the doctors in kokila ben and that's the time the mother said no doing nothing and i would rather visit rajiv and this is where she uh, brought him to me and i still remember 20 minutes of that session because he had gone through some traumatic experience again a breakup with a girl and he was very angry about it and also very sad so he just sat down 20 minutes asked him to and there are some movements and support and all that that we do and i did that and this guy after 20 minutes he just closed his eyes and when see once he opens his eyes he says i have never been to such an experience it's so calming it's so relaxing it's so peaceful it's as if i am walking in some himalayas and it's so calm and after that i have this video also he could just lift his uh, leg the left leg maybe half a feet above the ground but by the end of the session he was able to lift it one foot and more and without any effort wow. and he is called in again after few days he comes almost after five days the mother comes and tells me he goes home the first thing he does is he throws away his walking stick he says i don't need it anymore and that night he goes out with his friends to have an ice cream and the mother is saying oh god i don't know how he managed it but he just did it on his own and he's saying nothing doing i was not feeling anything he comes back after five days and he was walking on his both the feet without limp no walking stick there was mild pain called him again after 20 days and this is just about what one session 20 minute session this is nothing I, short of a miracle because as a doctor uh, so for all of those who don't know hemiplegia is as, uh, due to a brain stroke the feet get paralyzed and according to modern medicine it's going to be paralyzed for life because according to modern medicine the neurons in the brain cannot regenerate right like your liver cells can regenerate your hand if you get a cut it can regenerate brain cells cannot regenerate according to modern medicine but here is a miracle where just by body sensing you know 
by unlocking those frozen emotions from the body. Here's a case of a man whose legs are paralyzed starts walking. Thank you so much for sharing this, uh, Dr. Rajiv. And also I had a case of cancer uh, who was like a similar result, which was showing, I am not very sure, but then it was, uh, and he not only got cured of it, someone who was not even able to move around because he was so tired, so weak, and he had done two years, three years of medication, then he comes to me. And this person, after six, seven, six sessions or something, he's, his energy levels are very high. He drives down his car, someone who's not even able to walk because of this weakness, he drives down his car from Borivili to Churchgate and back. And then he was a music, he, he, he was a CA who also liked music. He said, I'll never practice CA because I never wanted to do it in my life. Wow. I loved my music, but I could never do it. And he went to Pune, he, he did a concert over there. Wow. This and he's saying, I just couldn't say, yeah, this is like, he couldn't even sit for five minutes. And I, he says the concert was two, three hours and I performed over there. Thank you. So that's the kind of miracle that happens. Yeah. This is nothing short of a miracle and you, Dr. Rajiv, are truly a miracle worker with this. And, uh, you know, this is simply brilliant. And, and, and in a way, it's simple, right? In a way, it's about listening to what the body actually has to say, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. On that note, would you like to read this out with us? So I'll make it appear on the screen. So yeah. there is this book club that we are doing. So if you yeah. if you'd like to read this out for us, we'd be really happy. So this is about... 10 things your body would tell you if you would only listen. So Rajiv sir, you're able to see it on the screen, right? Yeah. Conversations with body, 10 things your body would tell you if you would only listen. Yes. So I would just like to mention over here, the body is always communicating or the body is always listening. The problem is that we don't know how to communicate to the body such that it listens or the body is always healing, but we don't know how to communicate such that it heals. So we got to learn the body's language of healing. Once you learn that language, miracles happen. And I don't even call a miracle because this is natural. People call it a miracle. I, 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 for people who are not practicing, it may be a miracle, but I don't call it a miracle because animals heal themselves. Yes, medical science might call it that because they are not looking at this part of the body, the spirit, the energy. But this chaos can happen and anyone can do it. The reason is that you are communicating, you are communicating to the highest potential of the, the, the human body or the universe and that's the spirit and once you do that it knows how to heal itself it can find its own way so that's why we have to connect inside beautiful thank you and then it happens on its own <laughs> that's beautiful so okay you want me to read it up yeah there are 10 things okay so i'll just read this do one thing a day to nurture acknowledge and appreciate me. Awesome. Awesome. Super. So, uh, Sanjeev, adding over here, since that uh, the sentence, acknowledge and appreciate me. So, when you are paying attention to your body, you are actually acknowledging and appreciating the body. Wow. Are you getting it? Because it's like, uh, you sit next to your dad. You may not talk to him or whatever. You just look at him and maybe he says something, you just nod or you just sit and you nod your head. It's almost like that. I acknowledge your presence. You don't have to say anything. And he feels good. Are you getting or you go and get water for him. He feels very acknowledged and appreciated. So yep. that's exactly what the, you got to do for the body. There's nothing special you got to do. Acknowledgement and appreciation. Just observe what's happening in the body. It's an appreciation. It's an acknowledgement. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Do you like to continue reading? Uh, the second part or this one? Yeah, yeah. Continue. I, I will not be able to too small. Okay, it's very small. Okay. Uh, so, would you just like to read out the uh, these the the uh, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, uh, yeah, that's good. The second is stop judging me, and that's so 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 very important. Remember, all of you. Uh, see, this is this is not just about the body. This is about the universe. This is about uh, human beings, all of them. When you acknowledge, when you appreciate, you know the kind of relationship you develop with people. And what happens when you judge, when you criticize? You stop having a great relationship. And that's exactly, I'm, 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 I'm glad that you have put this book in front of you. I'm very happy. So that's exactly. So when you criticize, there's something in you that contracts. Like how you feel, how does a child feel when the child is criticized? The child goes into a shell and that's where the beginning of the disease starts. So judgment is where the beginning of a disease starts. Yes, where you're criticizing because the, when the beginning of the disease is generally because the energy in you gets contracted. See, we are an expansive being. If you notice, we are always expanding, we are always growing, we are always evolving. And anything that stops us, we don't like it. The energy in us is always expanding outwards. But if someone hurts you, troubles you, criticizes you, you notice that energy in you contracts. Right? And that contraction of energy slowly creates a block in you. And over a period of time, that is what develops into a disease. Beautiful, beautiful. And the third yeah. point. Third point. I was created to have fun. That's amazing. That's amazing. Ask me about me. Yes. The fourth thing your body is ask me about don't do things that involve me without asking me. Okay, you've got to take permission of the body. So this is one thing that I would like to share. Amazing, amazing. So this is something that you all can practice, huh? So I, I do my, I, I'm into Tai Chi and I also, I'm also into other martial art called Capoeira. And if people who haven't done Capoeira, if you are into martial arts or you want to do some kind of exercise, I would rather say instead of joining a gym, do Capoeira. Yeah, do Capoeira. It's one of the, uh, it's actually getting your body into the right kind of movement. So can it's you repeat like that? What is it called? Capoeira. How do you See, spell it? C A P O I E R A. Capoeira. Capoeira. Yeah. Is it a kind of martial arts? Is it a kind of martial arts? It's a it's a Brazilian martial art, but more than a martial art, it it really flexes your body. Like the movements, there are there are jumps, there are uh, back bends, uh, back arching. There is somersaulting. There is a uh, uh, lot of things. Dance is there. Music is there. So there's so much of it happening over there. It's like you going back to your basics. How a child does it. So when you connect to your body like that, your body feels very happy and you're very toned, you're very energetic. Right? So that is one thing. So when I'm doing that in the morning and I am practicing with a tree, I'm punching on a tree or I'm just doing my small kicks or I do whatever. So I just tell the tree first that, okay, I'm sorry if I'm hurting you. Yeah, and forgive me for that. And I do that. And by the end of it, again, I touch it and say, thanks for whatever you're giving me. And it's almost like seeking a permission. It's very important. It's, it's that energy that feels good. Yeah? So it's important to ask the body also. And also take, uh, it's almost like inquiring. Ask me about me. It's like inquiring about the body. You feel Good when you talk to a friend, hey, how are you doing? Or so many doctors, Sanjeev, you might be feeling great now in this uh, whole lockdown period when someone calls you up and says, Doctor, how are you feeling? And otherwise, they call up and say, Doctor, thanks a lot for whatever the whole fraternity is doing. Let me tell you, I feel very proud. I feel very proud being a doctor. So it's almost like you're asking that person, How are you? Yeah, so it's very, very important. 
absolutely thank you for that and what's the fifth thing that the body would tell us what is the fifth over here if you can read yeah. up I, I, uh, ask me what it would take to get me to look the way you want me to ask me what would it take to get me to look the way you want me to yes the body has every answer and let me tell you your body is talking to you all the time right so some time back i was slightly on the i i was never heavy but i always wanted a better body a toned body a energetic body so the body just knows but then you have to accordingly go about uh what what was that asking so asking the body how it would like to look rather than forcing yeah. the body yes you know, I, i should look like this i should be thin what if we could ask the body hey body how would you like to look yes so uh okay so that makes sense yeah uh, but at the same time there's some conscious will that you're using over here yeah. but you allow the body to take charge yeah and that's where i'm saying with this tai chi and capoeira and some kind of martial you you, you are actually uh, uh, nurturing the body in a way to actually fulfill on the way it wants has to look yeah if you not, notice all this primitives or this natives yeah they, there is lot of connect they have with their own body yeah they are very earthy many like many very, farmers and all they very earthy people they are so connected yes. to the earth you know yes. if, so i was i was you know we used to have a a, a man servant at our home before if mm. if any if any of the plants in the garden used to die he would cry he was yeah. so connected to the plants and he was our gardener yes and his, he had this green thing green thumb you know anything he would plant it would blossom so fast like there yes. are there are some people so is it is it like your body has a direct connection with the planet 100% because see there is no difference between you and the planet are you getting me that's why i say if you want to know what you are doing to the planet look at your own body the same thing if you go with you stay in a metropolis and you stay outside a metropolis in a village or whatever where there is more of greenery you automatically start feeling healthier and i can really connect to this because uh, look at the way i will talk about bombay it's all concrete and look at how people are over here very stressed you cannot look at the sky you cannot look at nature you don't have trees but the moment you shift out of go out of bombay even for a day or something go to a resort where there is lot of greenery you feel very fresh and you, in order to feel very fresh i always suggest don't take two days holidays make it more than three days because in the first two days you are just discharging and even if you go out don't get into too much of party and all that then you are not doing justice to the so vacation suggest, so uh, dr rajiv suggestion is if you do go to a you know a green place make sure you stay there at least for 3 days you know at least because i have seen that on the third day it start starts bringing about a shift and generally when i because i when i go to mysore and all i take i go for 10 days or something by the third day i can see that the shift happening but the first two days it's like such a struggle for me because the body is cannot just switch over like this beautiful yeah. beautiful and yeah. the sixth one Uh, your body is telling us yeah can you tell me i am I, because i haven't read this book so i would not yeah, yeah, yeah. it's no it's just the body telling us i am the one eating you know so it's yeah, it's so I, i i this is amazing so i can share this one example so i was at dadar dadar is a station in bombay and i i liked a lot of uh, this vada pav you know vada pav yeah yeah so you must be knowing so so and uh, i whenever i eat i don't like i wouldn't eat one i would take two and i was very hungry i have I, i had done a talk for 3 hours so i just picked up two and i gobbled it in and by the time i 
got into the train back to come back to my place. I sat down and I could feel a sense of heaviness in my tummy. And it was painful heaviness. You know how it is when you eat too much and you are not able to stand or move. It was so heavy. And again, I started my course somatic. I just sat it. Now, one good thing about course somatic is that you can do it anywhere, anytime. It doesn't matter where you are and what position you are. You can do it lying down, sleeping, walking, anywhere. Yeah, even if you're watching TV, it, you can just do it anytime. So I sat down, I put my hand on my belly where it was hurting and I, I just put my hand there and I said, okay, what is happening? And, uh, and it was as if the stomach spoke to me. It says, don't do that again. It really hurts. It really hurts when you eat so much. And I felt so, I, I, felt, I felt bad that day. I just, I told, I put my hand over there. I kept my hand over there and told my stomach, I'm very sorry and forgive me for what I did. I didn't, I was just, I just gave into my desire. And let me tell you, over a period of time, I stopped eating vada pavs. And vada pav is my favorite. Matlab, I used to, every time I used to do a training, I would eat two or three of them. And now it's days. I still love it. Whenever I get a chance, I eat it. But now it's days or sometimes weeks. I don't eat. Otherwise, I would crave and I would go out and eat it. Go out of my clinic, go to the vada pav place, eat and come back again. So that is the kind of craving I would have. No, something, but something that I really loved here of what you shared is that you actually spoke to your stomach. You had a dialogue yeah. with your stomach. You told your yes. stomach, hey, you know what? I'm sorry that I've been, you know, I've been harsh with you or I've been hard with you and not asking you what you would like to eat. Yes. That, that was brilliant. Yes. And let me tell you, the pain went down immediately. Huh? The pain just vanished because it was like when it happens, when you do something right, you can feel like a gas-like uh, sensation moving out of your body, some energy movement happening and poof, it changes as if it made space. It just wants that technology. It just wants to listen to you. So, what is or... so, doctor, what is pain then? This pain goes away the moment you acknowledge it. So, what is that pain? So, pain is it's a symptom that tells you that something is not right, what you're doing and what how you're doing it. Pain is not a bad sign. Pain is a very, very good sign. So never disregard pain. Never like I have had so many people when they have pain, they, they become very nasty to themselves. There are people who say, Mera haat itna ke kaat ke fake do. Guess what your body must be going through when it hears that from you. You are the owner of the body. It's almost like you, you, like you have a child and you say, I'll throw you off in the gutter or I'll throw you in the well. Just imagine what the child must be going through. So much scared. And you're saying, Mera haat kaat ke fake do. All you need to is just pay attention to the pain. Like you talked about the frozen shoulder. I talked about the uh, pain of the frozen shoulder. So it's just about it needs you to just observe. Someone writes about hormonal imbalance. Okay. So it just needs you to acknowledge and be with it. And then it knows how to heal itself. Remember the, the body is subconscious. It is way, way, way more intelligent than what you think. Yes, you can interfere with the intelligence of the body. You can interfere with the intelligence of the body. The body knows how to do it, how to go about, when to do it. It just knows it. You know this very well, uh, Sanjeev, being a doctor. Like even if there's a big slash, and if it is just like left like that, after a few days, it heals on its own. Yep. Primary healing, secondary healing, what we study yes. in pathology. Automatically, the wound closure happens. Automatically, the white blood cells come. Immunocytes come there. And they are producing fibrinogen, fibrin collagen. Collagen is produced. And it just seals the wound. Exactly. And including uh, uh, fractures. Yep. And it doesn't matter what kind of fracture you're talking about. There are people who have healed themselves where every bone is broken and then still they are walking, moving. The, we can talk about the miracle man over here who healed himself of, after a plane crash. Wow. wow. So it wow. can just heal itself. It just knows how to do it. Yep. And the seventh thing that the body would tell us if we listen to it is here, Dr. Rajiv. Ask me ask. what movement. Yeah. Yes. Ask me what movement I like to do. So it's like 
asking the body. So would you like to tell us something about that? If we uh, are, yeah. yeah. So as I said, I don't know about the book, but I can only tell from my experience. So there is a particular movement that there's a rhythm of the body. There's a particular movement of the body. So there are times when I just want to close my eyes and move my body. And it's just as if it's trying to put itself in place. And it speaks to you. And each one over here in this, even if you put out your hand like this, and if you just allow and you just make a movement, and there is a particular movement that the body is asking for. And then it's very energizing. It's, that's how it is. Are you hearing me? So I, I used to have this uh, workshop. I don't know whether you attended. This is called Expression to Expansion. In expression to expansion, what I do is that I put on some music and I would tell people to just gather and then we start moving the body. And slowly, it's as if it knows there's a particular rhythm of the body. And if it falls in the rhythm, you are healthy, you are healed. Yeah. So I would, and slowly and steadily they would move and then there would be something happening in the body and some moment and after some time, maybe some, for some it will be 3 minutes, for some it will be 10 minutes, for some it will be 15 minutes. And after that movement, it's almost like you are going with the rhythm of the body. Otherwise, we are all stiff and tight and we are not allowing the body to move the way it wants to. This is, this is fact, truly, truly amazing. Yeah. yeah, You know, I was, I was talking to somebody who is a dance therapy expert. So I was okay. asking them, so what is, so if you can teach me one thing from dance therapy, what would it be? So what she told me was there is an upper zone of the body, there is a middle zone of the body and there's a lower zone of the body. So when you do dance therapy, you, so she, what she told me was play a music and notice which zone of the body you're moving extra and which zone of the body you're not moving at all. Then I was noticing my upper zone was active, my lower zone was active, my middle zone I was not moving my middle zone of the body at all. Then I called her and I asked her, the, hip. the middle zone of my body just doesn't seem to move when I dance, you know. So she said, that's why belly dancing is one of the best dance therapy forms to release any issues with power struggle, any issues with control. You know, the, the solar plexus, the Manipura Chakra, as they say, any issues of diabetes, any issues of, you know, insulin hormone production in the body and all of that. She said, through just through belly dancing, people have got out of midlife crisis because it's moving yes. the middle zone of the body. Yes. So, uh, it is, it is your, your hip. Yeah. I, the, of course, she, the person talk, talked about the solar plexus. I would go a bit lower in the Swadishtana Chakra. That is the important part because that's where the energy center is. And if you notice, all of you, if you notice, whenever you are stressed, whenever you have an emotional suppression, your hip goes tight. When you are scared, your hip goes tight. Right? Yes. And when you are not in a happy zone, your hip goes tight. Are you hearing me? It's quite interesting. It's quite interesting yeah. to learn the language of the body yes and also i just for all the people quite sure everyone is a grown up over here so uh, uh, when you are having an issue with your partner some anger some fight or whatever the first thing that goes out of the window is sex are you hearing me because it's when you are stressed you cannot physically relate to a another person I'm talking sexually can you get out get intimate because the hip goes tight and when you're happy you can see the hip movements you getting me? so it's very very important that uh, uh, this is very important the dance movement so expression to expansion is all about this movement in fact I had someone who came, who's written a book now he's an author so he called me up and he said Raju I want to do this workshop yeah, I, I don't know whether you know him. His name is John T. Yeah, I told you that I can, I can mention his name. So he's become an author, and he was he's also he was quite heavy. Uh, and then uh, he lost his weight. He wrote a book, and this is there's one more breakthrough I want to have, but I want to do this expression to expansion. 
because I just want my body to move and I know. And he came in and then he said, Raju, I really got a break. No, I don't remember what it was. But then that's how it is. Just by moving the body. Because the body has all the experiences. So once you start moving, automatically there are a lot of changes that happen. This was brilliant. And something you said, you know, when we have uh, struggles in relationships and you have conflicts in relationships, the first thing that goes out of the window is the sex, right? So yes. conversely speaking, if we introduce physical touch, you know, you know, say like, you know, sh touching the shoulder of your partner or, you know, hugging your partner or just mm. holding the hands of your partner, just yeah. by introducing physical touch, mm. can it change the dynamics of the relationship? Provided the other person wants it or requires it. Because you cannot just, because the body feels threatened. This is, that is where I talked about the movement and the support. You cannot just touch a body, whether it doesn't matter whether the person is your partner or your child or whatever. You must have, even with children, when they're angry, you go and touch them, they say, don't touch me. Are you anyway? Or if they're scared and they go, you go, so, no, no, don't come. So the body is responding. And even if they don't do the movement, there's something inside the body that uh, uh, goes away or goes back. Are you anyway? So retreats. So you got to be very careful when you talk about the touch. That's why. Sometimes you may be partners or married for 10 years, 15 years. But there are times when you try to touch the person, the person says, don't touch me. And then you say, oh, you told me that you don't touch me. No, that moment is so critical. You have to understand. It was coming from deep subconscious and the body is reacting and it has its own reactions. You've got to understand. You allow it to soothe and you allow it to calm down a breath. And then you will see that even if you touch it, the person will understand you better. And then whatever. It's very, very important. This, this throws a lot of light, uh, Dr. Rajiv. This is opening up things for me at multiple levels. I'm so grateful for this conversation. Yes. And coming to the eighth thing that the body would tell you, don't buy the latest fad. What does that mean? You know, uh, point eight has to do with fads. Your body says, don't buy the latest fad, meaning the trend that's going on as to what will finally change me. I don't need to be changed as much as I need to be listened to. Your body would just like you to listen to it and it will change anything you want. It is really simple. Yes, the body is very, very simple. Your body don't buy the latest fad as to what will finally change me. See, basically, uh, you you got to learn to be with the body and as much as you remain natural it will help you as much as you remain simple it will help you like we hear about fancy foods you and yeah khaya wa khaya about diet supplements and weight diet supplements, supplements and protein shakes what's your take on yeah. that on all of that I, I i would i would never recommend that but if somebody is you know hitting the gym and all and their trainer is saying take a lot of protein shakes that's, then I then then I would say the trainer doesn't know. What's your advice? What's your I, advice? So I have a very good friend, yeah, Vishwaji. So he's a personal uh, personal trainer, and he's been telling me that you take for a long time. And I said I will not take any unnatural or uh, any supplements like this. And now he's he's also saying okay that that makes sense now. You getting me? Because it it has its own side effects and. We don't even know what it is. And then after some time, you, they come up with this, oh, it's all farce and all that. So you don't need it. Yes, you might need some kind of supplement, but then you can figure out some kind of maybe. Uh, I have just started in last one month, I have started taking something, but that's more Ayurvedic. And I could see a change because my body just, like I just felt that there is something that is a nutritional supplement which I'm missing. Because there are particular symptoms, thoughts that come up. And I said, maybe there's a particular uh, supplement that I need. So I had met someone. So I picked it up and I could see a huge change happening in me. My, my thoughts started becoming positive. I started becoming very uh, energetic. And I started feeling very good about myself. So I, could, I would say that. But then most of this, uh, uh, you're talking about the whey and the whey protein and all, I would not recommend it. You can find something else. So, Dr. Rajiv, if suppose, you know, I am a vegetarian, you know, vegetarian diet, is the protein, is the protein sufficient? You know, dietary, from a dietary perspective, are we challenged? 
for protein. I am, I am a vegetarian myself. Yeah, I, I do eat eggs, but that was like some time back. My friend said that you start having. So otherwise, I'm mostly on a vegetarian diet. I don't drink milk for last 10, 15 years. So one of the things I realized was like I saw you on your uh, on the mobile. The last visit WhatsApp was 315 or something yesterday. So if you don't sleep, that's the time you start suffering. That is what I realized. I was suffering most of the time because I was not sleeping. I was reading, I was doing something and I would be very proud that I sleep less. But then I, I started realizing that I am paying a price for not sleeping. So sleep is the key. <clears throat> See everything, whatever you eat and drink and all, in order to get it, have it absorbed, you've got to rest the body. You've got to balance both the work and all that. Yeah, something to deal with insomnia. Yes, we can do all that. Yeah. So you've got to rest your body. And I would be very struggling with my sleep. But then I realized I had so many thoughts and all that. And I would always be on the search for something more, something more, something more. Do more, do more, don't sleep, don't sleep. But then I was paying a price. But once you start sleeping and then you start taking the supplements, I think it's good enough. So doctor, how many hours of sleep is good for us? How many hours of sleep would you recommend? It is different for different people. Many people, they say eight hours. Yeah. That's good, but the, it's not about sleep, Sanjeev. It's about the rest that you get. People what's sleep, the but they don't. They are not. What's the difference between rest and sleep? So sleep is something that you could do, do physically. Yeah, but rest is something that really put your mind and everything to relax. The quality of sleep. Yeah, yeah. So rest is very very important. So there are people who sleep for three four hours and they feel very rested. And there are sleep people who sleep for eight, nine hours and they are not rested. They be restless. They they're still restless. <laughs> but they are not rested inside. They they don't feel that that tiredness going away. They don't feel that relaxation coming in. That's why doing a core somatic just before sleeping and you know, observing the sensations and all that, it releases all the extra stress. And then so why are we restless? Because we are, these memories and these experiences are getting triggered off that are stored in our body. The energies that I connect to you and all that, that's all my body sensing. We are all sensing organisms. So my body is sensing all the time. And then it latches on to all these experiences also. And what we do is that we are just, we are just lying down with that. So the body is just trying to process all that. So how do you get sleep when you're processing so much of it? All you not need to do is that release all those energies. So it's it's very good that when you, you can just close your eyes for five minutes and just feel all those body sensations. And after some time it just settles. And then you go to sleep, you'll have much better sleep. And yeah. that would be a rest, restful sleep. That is beautiful because that brings us to our next point. That is, you know, where does this come from? So all the sensations, many external stimuli and external sensations in the body, thoughts, oh. feelings, emotions of other people that we are picking up on energies of places, people that electronic gadgets that we are picking up on our body. One question that we can ask is where does this come from? So yeah. doctor, do you want to talk about that? About how oh, you I, 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 I would love this. I, I, I'm just amazed because I told you once you start knowing the body, it's as if that person knows you and is written the book. So that's how it is. For me, it's almost like that. So what I do is that when I close my, I, I close my eyes and just I observe and then I say, okay, I observe and then I say, okay, Oh, what's that emerge? What's that memory or what's that experience? And who's that? And suddenly I'll see that boom, that someone is in front of me, and I'm not even thinking of that person. But then when I actually notice, I have been thinking of the person, but I was not aware of it. It had triggered a memory. So it is not my energy, it's that person's energy. Okay, there are times when I'm I am quite restless and I just close my eyes and I sit down and I say, oh, I'm feeling so restless. And then I suddenly see my mom. My mom's no more. But then I suddenly see her and then I say, oh, I, I was just connecting to her again and again. But that's also not my energy, by the way. So from just mother. this one question, who does this belong to? Just this yes. one question, where is this coming from? Is where this is coming from? I, it's not even a question I would ask, but then I would just be with it. 
my my way is just being with it and just connecting to that sensation and then observing what are the thoughts memories experiences coming in and if at all a person comes in because uh, and you just release that energy you say okay go back to that person wow this is brilliant and you yes. know yes. it really yes. amazes me because this is something that we teach in even in access consciousness and even though you are you are not in you don't do access consciousness you are speaking exactly what we teach exactly what is present in this book and i was actually thinking and searching who would be the best trainer to come and talk to you know talk to us about this and i could not find anybody not not to put down other trainers i could not find anybody even within access who would speak from this space that you are speaking from and i'm so grateful that you were available and you could come in and you could talk to us about this yeah so, so one more thing sanjeev as i mentioned already the truth the real truth is always universal and the universal truth is something that you have to go for and it cannot be different for you and me any religion any community any person rest what we are struggling with is personal truths personal truth and we keep fighting we keep fighting saying that oh this is my truth this is rajiv's truth and we need we sanjeev and rajiv get into a fight but if you connect to yourself and very simple which is written in the upanishad if you cannot find it in your body you will never find it in the universe wow this is brilliant i am blown i am <laughs> blown about this <laughs> this is what you cannot find it yes of course yeah. i was amazed you know my my grandfather my grandfather used to do this you know this satsang on the shrimad bhagavatam mm. so in the shrimad bhagavatam it's like there is an episode where uh, yashodara uh, the mother the foster mother of lord shri krishna she mm. you know ties him up and he's eating clay he's eating the sand and everything and she is scolding him and she is like what are you doing krishna and then krishna opens his mouth oh, wow, yeah. and then in inside the mouth she sees the whole universe yes. and then and then he says you know what krishna tells her in a simple line he says anoraniyan mahato mahiyan he says within the microcosm of the body right. lies the entire universe within the body lies the whole macrocosm that's so true that is how how important it is we yeah, are to respect our body and also to respect other person other people to respect our body it's so very important because it's talking everything that you are the cosmos is all about so you are dealing with the cosmos within yourself don't just treat it like a body it is not it's it's energy which is connected to the whole universe that's why whatever you do to the universe you are doing it to yourself and whatever you are doing it to yourself you're doing it to the universe so if that's we, why we kind of have, pollute, if you are doing a lot of pollution in the world around that pollution shows up in the body as well the toxins the toxic chemicals in the body look at the look at the kind of diseases most of us suffer from today respiratory respiratory diabetes cancers mm-hmm. what is it from exactly. your view from your awareness dr rajiv what is cancer why is cancer so rampant what is it uh, so basically uh, cancer as we know erroneous multiplication multiplication of the cells right there's a particular amount that it should multiply and there is also degeneration regeneration degeneration when it's balanced it's perfectly okay but in this case there is a faster multiplication of cells which is not in control so basically cancer is something that happens when you are trying to control too much of yourself too much of uh, emotions so the body it's almost like the dam you made a dam and there's a lot of water behind and there's a lot of pressure but after some time there would be a crack on the wall and then suddenly there would be the the dam would burst and all the water would flow and there it would cause cause uh, so much of damage to everything around same thing happens you know, when you are trying to control something then the the body uh, the, the when it cannot be controlled it goes out of control and that out of controlled 
is cancer. So most of us, if you notice, many of us suffer from cancer. Yeah, it's only because we are all trained to control our emotions nowadays. We are all trained to control our emotions nowadays. We are not allowed to express. I still remember when we were kids, there were people who were shouting from one end to the other end. They were screaming away. They would walk away. They would get angry. They would just remove that anger in that moment and it's over. But now, even if a mother wants to scream at the child, she has to think twice. If you want to scream on the road, you have to think twice. If you're in a restaurant, you have to put behave. You know, I'm not saying you should be rash and ugly in all these places. No, I'm not saying that. But the expression of emotions is not allowed. You are supposed to behave in a particular fashion. And we are getting trained, educated like that. It is, it is so the truly, body, sorry, it's truly a sorry state of affairs. But one thing I really, I really wish to emphasize from what you said right now, doctor, you said that kids in that 10 seconds, you know, in that moment, they are expressing the emotion and they get complete with it. Hmm. But we are carrying on that emotion from childhood, from a traumatic past experience. We are still carrying it and somewhere we are carrying it in the body. And yes. that suppressed emotion is becoming a disease today. Yes. So what is the solution, doctor? What is the solution to dealing with emotions then? So how, do the, we, how do we get from a space of emotional suppression to an emotional expression? What's, what's healthy over there? So what's healthy is basically, uh, there are quite a few things that are healthy. One is uh, exercise. Second is good amount of quality water. Good amount of right kind of food. So avoidance of processed sugar is the key. Processed sugar. Processed sugar. The white sugar that we consume. White sugar. That's like poison. And also uh, avoidance of uh, uh, the maida products. The white flour. The flour. Yeah. White flour so, and white sugar. White sugar. Yeah. And uh, caffeine, of course. And all these aerated products. Coke. Right. And Many of these aerated products you should avoid because it has got it has got a lot of uh, sugar in it. Yeah, actually, actually, if we test it out, you can we can actually test it with the body. How does the body feel after I eat a Maida product, and how does the body feel after I eat a home cooked meal made by my mother? Yes. What, what is the yes. difference that my body feels? We can experiment hmm. and check it out for our own self. And also. Uh, I was doing this quantum work for some time. So if you take a bottle of water and you just hold it for some time and give it positive energy, I guarantee you there's a change in the taste of water. Wow. I'm going to test it right now. <laughs> you can just, so that's why what I did some few years back, I started off this because I was feeling low energy. I didn't realize that it is because of lack of sleep. So every time I drink water, I would thank water. And I would say that this water that is going me, it's, it's bringing a lot of good energy in me and it's energizing me. So I keep having a lot of gratitude in my practice. So in That's fact, I started realizing that when I started having gratitude, so I am, I, I was wondering why it works. I said, when I have gratitude, I have to create that thought within me first. And that's why I believe gratitude works. Can you, can you repeat that? To, when you have gratitude, what did you say? When you have gratitude or I speak, I speak highly about you. I acknowledge you. I say, Sanjeev, you are a great person. You are a good person. And all in real sense. Okay. Not that polish wala. But when I do it, I got to have all those positive words within me first. Okay. So you mean to say when, when, when we acknowledge the greatness of somebody, when we are grateful for if I'm grateful for you, I first create that energy within my body first. I will have to. Then only I can say it to you. I so, cannot have a negative thought and speak positive to you. So, Are you getting me? If I have a positive thought and I say it to you, I am creating. So I am actually creating that goodness within me. Yeah. You get that? So it, it, it started becoming a very easy and a simple practice for me. 
So I started doing it I with my client. Nobody, nobody has ever explained gratitude this way. I have read books on gratitude. I have read The Secret. I have read Magic, the book about secret. But this is the first time that somebody is telling us that when you are grateful to somebody, suppose I am thankful to a particular quality of a person. You know, suppose I'm thanking Dr. Rajiv for his generosity. Then I, I am actually creating the generosity inside of me first and then acknowledging it externally. Yes. So that's so beautiful. That's so well articulated. Thank you so much for that. And also it is very simple. Are you hearing me? It's, it's very simple. You can only give what you have. You cannot give what you don't have. You cannot get chikus on a mango tree. <laughs> that's beautiful. Thank you. Me? And bringing us to the last key, you know, the 10 keys for the body. The last key is I am a body and you are an infinite being. So Rajiv, sir, do you want to talk about this? So the book says that we are a body and I mean, we are an infinite being with a body. You are a being with a body. Hmm. And I didn't know this is, this is Gary's book. Yeah, this is Gary's book. I am amazed. I didn't know it was this book. I just read it. This is, this is resonating exactly with, you know, whatever, whatever body sensing, body work that you've always been coaching us about. Hmm. Okay. Hey, I am, I am a body. You are an infinite being. You are not inside of me. I am inside of you. Uh, I'm a body, you are an infinite being uh, because you are infinite which is really, really, really big. You are too immense to fit inside of me and I exist inside of you but that doesn't mean we should have, shouldn't have have a connection. See, I, I, I those are the 10 things. I, 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 it's too quickly uh, to, uh, like, to perceive what they have written but then I would just go with this, yeah? Uh, You are bigger than what you are. Are you getting me? You are bigger than what you are. Yeah, because you are not the physical body. This is what I would say. You are an energetic being. Okay. Which is represented by this body. And you are a, 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 a that, that energy which is a part of that universal energy that we talk about and you are representing you I would call it, I generally call it the 6 by 2 you are represented by the 6 by 2 but this is an instrument which is actually uh, expressing that energy wow. it's an instrument right, this is what I would say so you are way bigger than this energy that's why you have to keep connecting to that energy you, know, you have to keep connecting to that energy and once you start connecting to your body you automatically connect to that energy around you or you that universal energy this. you won't believe this this exact words what you're saying so last night i was reading autobiography of a yogi by paramahamsa yogananda so hmm. in that book there is a conversation between paramahamsa yogananda and his master lahiri mahashaya uh -huh. and lahiri yeah. mahashaya tells him exactly this he says, your body is an instrument for yeah. the universal force. Yes. Something of, something of what you exactly said right now. And that's exactly what it is. That's why you've got to be very respectful of your body. Are you getting me? You've got to be very respectful. Not only your body, but others' body also. You've got to be very respectful. Because it's like you are, you are a unique being. Who's been given this body, this energy that has been to experience what's happening around us. But when you start being respectful, you actually experience the universe the way it is rather than the way you want it to be. Wow. And that's where the transformation occurs. And that's where you are connected to the divine one. And that's what is the real enlightenment. I think this is the core of everything. I think this is the core of the Bible. This is the core of the Quran. This is the core of the Vedanta. This is the core of access consciousness. This is the core of core somatic integration. This is the core of hypnotherapy. This is the core of NLP. This is the, this is the core of everything. Universal truth. That's what I'm against saying. Bring us back to that. You know, I, I, needed, I, just, I really needed my people here to hear it from somebody else, you know, because I am in access consciousness and I am so much in access that 
if I keep saying access, access, people may be like, okay, he's in access, so he's going to talk about that. You know, I needed somebody outside of the system to come and give an insight into that. So, mm. because because when we are usually when we are inside of a system, we kind of create alignments and agreements with the system. Yes, and it becomes sometimes very become very difficult to understand even the value of the system because you're so you take the system for granted you're within the system so it yes. is it is when a when a person comes from outside the system and is able to acknowledge the system you suddenly acknowledge the brilliance of you you suddenly acknowledge the brilliance of your system and you suddenly acknowledge that the truth is universal yes there is no difference at a fundamental level and all the truths can be acknowledged or experienced once you start connecting to the body Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. On that note, doctor, would you, can you take us through a demo? We all are waiting for you to, you know, do a guided meditation or a guided demo for us for our body sensing. Okay. So that we'll do it for five minutes or so. That yeah. You, you, you can minutes. take your time. No problem. So there's no fixed time. Uh, maybe, okay. maybe after, maybe after the, uh, so, or, or we can do it this way. We can open. We can open for some questions for the yes. any questions for doctor for the next ten minutes, and we can end the call with a five-minute uh, guided meditation of the body sensing. Okay. So yeah, we can do that. Yeah, then, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. So does anybody have questions for Doctor Rajiv? Hi, this is Nehal. I have a question. You are Mega. Nehal. Nehal. Yeah, yeah. Please go. Ahead. Uh, hi, doctor. So, how does your mind play uh, in respect to whatever your body is sensing? I know I've heard from the conversation that your body is the key and your body knows everything. It's an intelligent machine. But how does mind come in picture and how we can control our thoughts in intent to control our body? Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Any anything more you want to add? Uh, uh, just question because I'm pregnant right now and I'm trying to do all the meditation and everything. I'm trying to keep my uh, mind-body connection and trying to keep cool. But there are certain situations where I get tensed. I get uh, out of my control, but I'm, I just need, need your guidance that how do I uh, encounter that? Yes. So first of all, Nehal, you said, right? Yeah, Nehal. Nehal, yeah. So Nehal, first of all... Uh, The body and the mind are not, it, it is as a concept, they are explained separately. Okay. But they are not separate. The body is the invisible mind and the mind is the invisible body. The okay. body is the mind, yeah? Yeah. So the body is the visible mind and the mind is the invisible body. Can you get that? Sure, yeah. So there is no like are you the are you the the the, the child in you? Or is the child separate from you? No, they are one. No. Yeah. Can you get that? And it is going yes. to be remain like this for a lifetime now. Okay. Are you getting me? Yes. So that's how it is. So where it, you don't have to get into concepts. All you got to do is just observe what's happening in your body. Your mind is talking to you. And it talks in the form of sensations. Okay. So just observe what's happening in your body and just notice what's happening. And that will release the stress. Yeah. How do you control your thoughts? Yeah. That's your next question. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Don't control your thoughts. Observe your thoughts. Be with your thoughts. Go along with your thoughts. They don't need to be controlled. They are just coming up. Like, like I give this example all the time to people that when the draft of air blows or the breeze blows, you don't control it. You don't try to trap it in a room. When you trap it in a room, it starts thinking. Correct. So all you've got to do is just allow the wind to blow and enjoy the wind or enjoy the breeze. Feel the coolness. So just observe the thoughts. Definitely. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your help. Oh, yo, yo, welcome and take care. Take care. Yeah. Well, uh, Thanks a lot. Yeah. It was yeah, really yeah. amazing to hear from you today. Yeah. Thank you.
thank you thank you nehal for your question and we wish wish the very best for you and your baby to come uh, the next question is by harmeet thank you harmeet uh, you can unmute yourself and ask your question hi dr rajiv for uh, loads of thanks with deepest gratitude i loved each word and everything that you said about bodies and body sensing and you know the core somatic thing that uh, um, sanjeev had already shared with us uh, the video uh, loads of thanks and i actually wanted to understand that my father has hernia of the stomach so hernia how can he yeah and it's something where the surgery can't be done hmm. so what can i contribute to him you know or what can i probably uh, tell tell him uh, with your help that will actually come out of, help him come out of this situation what's his age he's around 65 okay so i don't know what you can tell him yeah that hmm. would help him get out of situation i don't know yeah but at the same time you can ask what i would do or i ask people to do like generally most of it requires a therapy okay because if there's a memory or something we got to release it some emotional stress or something or whatever has created this kind of problem we got to resolve that so but at the same time i would ask that instead of struggling with anything else just observe that area where is got that hernia just observe that area and start connecting to that area and allow whatever is coming up just observe keep observing and there could be a point where certain memories and thoughts without trying to uh kind of reject any thought or choose any particular thought you have to observe every thought and there could be a memory that comes up and then start observing that also there could be emotions that come up you have to deal with all that okay. you know, but simply i would tell you ask him to observe maybe he can also put his hand there hmm. and just observe that feeling and keep observing the feeling that would be the first step that i would suggest so basically witness whatever witnessing is the key thank you so much i really appreciate do that and let me know yeah sure yes. thank you so much yeah i will i will just share this with uh, with uh, you all though it is not uh, so bad but then there was this person who was a wealth manager in a mnc and he was having this pain that would come up every day at 6:30 in the evening only 6:30 and at that time he had to grab something he had to eat something and the pain would settle and uh, when he came for my workshop in co for cosmetic uh, it was like uh, i said what's happening and he was quite skeptical he says how can just looking at the body and feeling the body would resolve something and he closed his eyes and he started observing and suddenly he started having thoughts of his mother and uh, that she used to give him food when he was a kid and all that came up and i don't remember exactly but i think he was missing that or whatever and he had tears in his eyes and he went back and he they later said rajiv the next day from that day onwards my pain has never come back and he's saying when i was sitting with you and you said oh this is happening i was so skeptical well, how can just observing the tummy resolve any pain but he's saying since that day it has never come back so that is how it works Wow! Thank you, thank you for sharing. Thank that. you so much. Thank yeah. you so much, Harmeet, for your question. Next up, we have Ranu and then Namrata. Hello, Doctor Rajiv. Thank you so much for giving us this um, beautiful session and giving us a lot of insight. And I think so, Sanjeev, Doctor Sanjeev, you're going to share this recording with all of us to revisit uh, what he has uh, discussed and shared with us. Yes, I will be uploading this on YouTube, and I will share the YouTube video with uh, all of you. Thank you so much. Gratitude from my side to both of you, uh, Doctor Rajiv. I just wanted to ask you one question regarding weight loss. There are a lot of uh, people who struggle to do weight loss. In fact, me also. I'm stuck with one particular weight, and I've not been able to come down uh, even after exercising, walks, and all of it. 
and uh, it's it's kind of uh, you know uh, very uh, frustrating at times so i'm just not understanding how how will how can my body sensations help me to move you know uh, in the direction which i have been wanting to move that is uh, reducing my weight loss okay so uh, see weight is not the problem weight is an outcome of a problem okay yeah so we are struggling with the outcome it's almost like the, ball, the your wall is leaking and you are just repainting it again and again that's why all these people who are struggling with weight even if they do go for the weight loss programs it doesn't work very well the reason is that you are working on the external surface of it that is the outcome of the problem the result of the problem you are not working on the problem so first of all when we are connecting to the sensations the sensations are coming from experiences and that sensations that experiences have their own energy blocks or emotional blocks in it so when you are observing the sensations you are actually connecting to those emotional experiences and that energy uh, experiences and thereby once you start observing it automatically starts bringing about the change it needs to bring about at the same time if you are very observant it will start guiding you in the direction of where you have to go yeah so okay. there, and, and as i said it is not just uh, sanjeev was asking what all are required so i was talking about exercises so it's not just exercises and i'm i'm definitely not talking about gym exercises we are talking mm -hmm. about much more free movement exercises yeah and we are talking about like what we talk about the functional training but each one requires a different thing altogether yeah and then we are talking about the kind of diet that you are having we are talking about the kind of emotions you are holding on in your body we are also talking about the kind of sleep you are having yeah okay. so all all these things are very very important and at the same time are you in integrity are you are your actions in congruency with wanting to lose weight yeah okay so you might say okay like i'm not when i say you it's not you you anyone so uh you are sleeping late hmm are you know if you are sleeping late then also it can contribute to your body's weight oh okay are you getting me so how do you get aware about all this okay what is contributing contributing to my body weight what so what was could that's i that's exactly that's that's exactly so one of the things is that start paying attention to the body and the body will guide you like i was i was always into some kind of exercise and martial art and all that but and capoeira was something that i was looking at 10 years back also but then i would not join for whatever reasons and then when i started doing lot of this work and i and also yeah what i was going to talk about breathing exercises is also very very important mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, breathing exercise is very important not just physical exercises first thing you have to get your breathing in alignment because when your breathing is aligned the body just sheds the extra weight got it so it's very very important because when the breathing is not aligned or not proper then it's coming from some emotional block if it's the proper emotions are there the healthy emotions your breathing is very natural very simple very calming but if you are not then it will trigger off a different breathing and that will need to be compensated mm so are uh, and you also look at your emotion are you looking at insecurity or are you looking at that a kind of feeling that i am missing out on something or a fear of rejection or a fear of uh uh or feeling that i am not getting importance the way i wanted i don't know maybe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. does that make sense yes yes dr rajiv i think so uh, bang on it does make sense a lot of things you have shared i think i just need to become aware of what exactly is going through in my body and so, when you are connecting to the body it makes you aware correct that's it what the what is that one basic thing which will uh, which will make me connect through my body like if i want to be connected through my body throughout the day it is just that you bring your focus inside on your body that okay what is happening every time generally it is not possible uh, throughout the day to do that see uh, uh uh everything needs practice and perseverance mm hmm can you get that so it is not a one day thing because you are going to be on this planet for at least 70 years 
Yes. And give and take now, you must have like maybe 30, 35, 40 years, whatever. So you still have 30, 40 years to go. So there's a lot of time we have. Correct. But then ongoing practice has to be there. It's like cooking. That's what I would give as an example. When on the first day, second day or like driving, you couldn't do it well. Mm. Now mm. when you're driving or you're cooking, you're not even looking at that, that where the salt is kept and how much of mirchi you have to put in. And how do you hold the steering? You just sit and you start and you just go. And you don't even look at the other cars. It's as if it's managing itself. But that's only because of so much of practice. So what is the one thing I can do which, which I can start with by, uh, which will help me, uh, you know, become aware of my body? Paying attention to your body sensations. Okay, whatever sensations, wherever I'm feeling. Yes. Just attention to that. Yeah. All right. All right, Dr. We'll, we'll, be doing that. we'll be doing that for five minutes. Thank okay, you. thank you so much, Rajiv, uh, Dr. Rajiv. Uh -huh. This was really insightful and I really look forward to after the lockdown to attend your workshop. Awesome. Sure. Amazing. Dr. Sure. Rajiv is at Andheri. His center is there. And uh, Rajiv, sir, you send me all the details of your workshop and I will, you know, promote it around. So, if you guys want to do workshops with Dr. Rajiv, you can contact me also. I will give you guys the information. Yes, Sanjeev, I'll always be in touch with you. Yeah, so you can see my WhatsApp status, my Facebook. I'm always promoting my workshop or somebody else's workshop all the time. Just so that yeah. people get information about what's happening. Right. So, uh, thank you so much, Ranu, for that. And something that I really want to emphasize based on what Dr. Rajiv just now said was the breath. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rajiv, sir, and I am doing so many workshops. Not one modality is talking about the breath nowadays. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the breathing, paying attention to the breath. There is not a single modality today that is, it is, many of them are neglecting the breath. Yes. How important is the breath for the body and for your wellness? Do you want to talk a little bit about the breath? See, what is the most important thing that is required in order to survive? Anyone? Oxygen. Exactly. People talk about water and all that. No, oxygen is required. You don't have oxygen, you die. And of course, you know it very well that the lung capacity has to be increased. Yeah, because we are not even using the last 20% we are not using. And with the kind of stress that we are going through and the kind of environment that we have, there are 40, uh, almost 30-40% of our lungs are not even working to its full capacity and may more. And then over there, above that, you're sick or you have a breathlessness issue or you have asthma. So you're actually working on some 30-40% capacity. So how do you expect to get the best out of your system? by working on 30, 40 or 50 percent capacity, you'll only work 50 percent and then the body has to compensate. So it gives diseases so that you start paying attention. So breathing is very, very important because once it gets oxygenated, you will start seeing the circulation getting better. Your thoughts are getting better. You feel more energized. Yeah, you you want to do things and then automatically things start falling in place. That's how you respond. Your body responds to you and you respond to the body. Thank you so much for that. So along with the meditation or along with the body sensing that we do, if we start focusing on the breath, do you think that itself can accelerate our healing and our journey of growth? Yes, yes, yes. yes. And also, Sanjeev, the whole of course somatic and the Tai Chi itself is a meditative practice. Though it doesn't, I don't talk about that as a meditative practice, but it's a meditative, what is meditation? You're focusing on something. Here we are paying attention to the sensations. But only thing, we are not trying to control the thought and all. We are just observing what's happening in the body. Right? We are not trying to control anything. We are just observing and allowing it to flow the way it's supposed to flow. And when you observe, there's something called intention and attention. You got to pay attention to it. It knows where to go, but it wants your attention. If you don't pay attention, it's like that small child who cries louder. If you don't pay attention. So the body is simply seeking your attention, wanting your attention. Pay attention to it and it will do its job brilliantly. So what is, it knows what, how to do it. What is some basic breath work that we can practice? There are lots of them. There are lots of them. Maybe so, in today's yeah. session, along with uh, the yeah. body sensing, would you be able to integrate a little bit of uh, you know awareness on the breath also? There's something that I know about you. You are that Pepsi ad ka icon. Ye dil mange more. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Always hungry and thirsty for more. That, that thirst, the secret <laughs> has never ended. <laughs> it's taken me 
from one modality to another modality to workshop to master to master <laughs> like you know like himalayan masters where you know swami rama writes in the Him- living with the himalayan masters he says that quest for knowledge would wake him up in the middle of the night and he would he would bother his master hmm. you know he would be like master what what is it that i'm missing master tell me what is it that i'm missing i want to grow <laughs> you know that, that 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 energy because this is always evolving this energy is that's why this energy is seeking for knowledge understanding is very much there and it's very important it's very important that you maintain this quest you maintain this energy in you because that is what is i believe actually enlightens you not just reading a book i'm not talking about that yeah. but actually connecting to what's happening like what you talked about the book reading reading and imbibing everything and also noticing how it is impacting you how does it feel inside yeah like, like, even, even yeah. like if you if you look at swami vivekanand vivekanand was asking every master he was asking every one have you met god do you know who is god and then finally he meets ramakrishna paramahamsa and paramahamsa says yes i have met god and i have spoken to god and then becomes the it then begins the whole journey of the student and the master and i have to say that i am blessed i am blessed to have wonderful masters like you you know i'm very very grateful for that yes and i always say that about my teachers <laughs> because i got the best my best teachers in the world best gurus i have got in the world best thank you thank you for that and and, and i think i think uh, you know when 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 we are asking that question you know when the student is ready the master appears yes yeah so thank you for that conversation next up i think uh, namrata and pooja po- i think uh, pooja pooja next and then namrata yeah hi 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 can you hear me i can hear you ha ah, mujhe na bilateral c form ka problem hai to uske bare mein aap kuch bata sakte hai kiska problem hai aapko bilateral c form wo to year are infected and temporal bone is damaged totally a uh, doctor she's got bilateral csom chronic suppurative okay. otitis media okay. for all of those okay. other people who don't know it is an ear infection that is present for a long duration and leads to a lot of discharge from the ears so she's okay. asking about that so let's hear from dr rajiv okay. what you know someone wrote csom yeah i got it so see again the practice remains the same yeah the practice always remains the same because wherever you go yes now when we are doing this i can only talk about one part of it that is being with the sensations but how to heal it that requires some kind of understanding some expertise and also maybe an intervention by a therapist yeah i have done like, yeah 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 please go ahead puja yeah i have operated one year and now doctor is suggested to operate for the second one yes so i am not talking about the operation part yeah i am not talking about the operation part i am talking about how do we heal it yeah because operation may not heal it because you are actually yeah it is required if at all you got to do some work or whatever but the thing is that if it is improved great but the body is trying to talk to you something it's trying to tell you something by creating that uh suppuration again and again in your ear or in a chronic way it's trying to tell you something which maybe you're not ready to listen or something that is there which is a struggle some 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 hurt some pain some emotional difficulty which is there yeah so we got to look into it and then but i would ask you to start just observing the ear like whatever is happening and see uh, to all of you maybe you don't know what to look for yeah you say oh, what i'm observing uh, i talked about memories experience but what am i looking which is the right one doesn't matter all you need to do is just observe 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 like it's like playing cricket or football you don't know ki how to hit a goal how to score that century but all you got to do is go and visit the nets every day and keep hitting the ball keep hitting the ball keep keep observing people and slowly and steadily there's a major possibility you might become a good footballer and a good cricketer 
So when you do the same thing again and again, the body automatically starts answering the way it gave to me in two thousand after two thousand. So that is what I would say. Are you getting me, Pooja? Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, you. but if it is a deep rooted and chronic, I would suggest that you take a help of a therapist. Okay. Yeah, because all can you on your own, it might become difficult because you would not know which one it is and which one you got to handle. Yeah. Are you getting me? Like I had this lady who came in with a major problem sometime back, sometime means two months back, and uh, as she was talking about it, I could notice that there was a lot of sadness and all that. It was coming up, and in that process, I, and she was—I think she was also feeling insecure. And in the process, I just got up and I just put my hand on her shoulders, and suddenly she said, "Rajesh, there's so much of energy flowing in my body. There's so much of energy flowing in my body." And within another 15-20 minutes, she said, "Rajesh, I'm feeling so calm, and all this time for so many years, almost 12 or 13 years, I've never been happy." But suddenly, I feel so much of surge of energy, and she started laughing. And next next time when she came in after 15 days, she's laughing and she's saying, "Raju, everything seems so different. My relationships have changed. The relationship with my husband for last time since we are married, he would never talk to me. He would just be very quiet, apna kam karo and nothing. But this time, after I went home, my husband came and sat next to me and said, "What are you doing?" And he actually poured his heart out about His own life. She's saying this has never ever happened in my life. So that's how the changes happen. So sometimes you need an intervention because uh, the therapist can see what's happening and help you, giving you the kind, right kind of support. Are we together? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Pooja. I hope you are able to practice the body sensing. And in case you require an intervention, you can, uh, you know. Uh, check with the therapist and last question for the day namrata because we are in short for time after this we can go for a group meditation that dr raji will guide us through so namrata last question come on hi dr raji thanks for your wonderful facilitation uh, thank you yeah i wanted to ask uh, like how can i eat as much as my body asks it's much better than before but still i feel sometimes i do over it little bit it's much much better see when you over it a little bit then i don't think it should be a problem at all okay okay so don't worry when you start making things wrong then the mind and the body starts repeating it a repeating a pattern yeah that's true yeah so what happens you eat a little more and then you start feeling bad or you feel guilty or you start talking negative about self now the body gets used to that pattern so in order to maintain that pattern of negativity it will somehow make you eat more can you get that yeah sure. then it is out of your control yes so even if you have eaten just it's okay you have enjoyed it that doesn't mean that you keep doing it because it has its own effects if you eat something physical so you just allow it and say good things okay like i told you about the vada pav thing talk to the body See what is it that is required? Be in gratitude, and automatically you will say, "See that okay, you will need the right amount of food. Like you will be eating the right amount of food." Can you get that? Yeah, yeah. So start connecting to the body. The moment you eat and you feel bad, don't just talk to it. Okay, I've eaten more. Now what? And just observe the sensations. No, I don't feel bad actually. <laughs> then it's okay. Then enjoy it. I would love to. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> obvious. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do love to eat, so I know how it is. Yeah, that's so. I'm talking from my experience more than your experience. Okay. <laughs> so, so that's how it is. I think I'll so, compliment it. Like I can yeah. acknowledge it. Yeah. Yes. So just be with the body. It will, it will, and then maybe what the question you asked, how do I reduce it? Just be with the body. It will automatically reduce it because the body knows the balance. Yeah. Are you know it knows where to go and how, how what is the balance it knows it but you have to start connecting yes thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you namrata for your question and thank you dr raji for that beautiful amazing uh, facilitation uh, so shall we begin your uh, the group uh, demonstration or the you know the guided meditation thing yeah, yeah. we can do that
and uh, get that ki we are just doing a short one for many of them you might have done it you might have experienced it you might have heard some uh, meditation tapes or whatever so it, it is, i won't say that this is not something that you must have this is something that you have never experienced nahi aisa nahi hai but i also say this about course somatic that course somatic is so simple it is so simple that you miss it can you get that it is so simple that you will miss it because it's just about observing the body so it requires it's i call it that it's like the mother's love it is so much there all the time that people don't even appreciate it or the parents love it is so much there are you getting me so course somatic is always happening you are always in connection the body is always talking to you but only thing is that it's so much there that becomes redundant you don't even pay attention to it yeah so start connecting to it you know i remember in in the workshop dr rajiv would keep saying uh, how does that make you feel perceive it in the body and just be with it and i would be yeah. like doctor be with it ka matlab kya hai like do din ka workshop tha by the morning of day 2 i got so angry with dr rajiv when i went up to him and i be like doctor what are you saying just be with it just be with the sensation is ka matlab kya because i was so much in the head i was always thinking i could not sense in the body and then he said no shut up and be with it then i just started just sitting and forcing myself and initially forcing but then actually coming out of my head and actually noticing what's happening in the body and i can tell you the results have been phenomenal it has helped me get the gold medal in my university so at mbbs yeah, you know how difficult it can be and i taught my college and i can definitely give credit that before every viva the syllabus is so much so much to study before the viva the anxiety would come no matter how well prepared i am no matter how intelligent i am the anxiety yeah. would come i would just sit with it notice it be with it the anxiety would go away in 10 minutes then i would ha- get a good sleep go give a good viva give a good exam and i can tell you i am the topper of my college congratulations thank you and core somatic has helped me before every single exam written exam oral exam before every exam it has helped me thank you thank you so much yeah thank you doctor over to you yes so just close your eyes everyone sit back you can keep it do you uh, with the eyes open also but it's better that you do it with eyes closed yeah so just pay attention so whatever place you are you can do it lying down you can do it sitting also simply close your eyes and gently bring your attention to your breath at your nostrils simply bring your attention to the breath at the nostrils notice the way it feels as it enters the nostrils it may be pleasant unpleasant do not analyze is it warm is it cool which part of the nostril it touches and enters as it enters and slowly feeling the breath as it enters the nostrils slowly feel it going up the nostrils down into your throat be aware of the sensations whatever you feel it could be pleasant or unpleasant remember there are no good or bad sensations there are only sensations 
you may feel good about it you may not feel good about it that's why pleasant or unpleasant there's nothing right or wrong about it slowly feel it filling going down the chest the back the abdomen the shoulders arms elbows forearms wrist hands up to the fingertips feel the sensations wherever you feel it in your hips thighs knees calf muscles heels and toes do not analyze do not make it right or wrong just observe wherever you feel the sensation it could also be moving sometimes you feel it in the palm at the same time you might also feel it in your elbows or in your belly or in your feet just allow and also noticing your breath at the same time be aware of your breath be aware of your body sensations notice the sensations wherever you feel them do not analyze do not go after your thoughts do not get carried away by certain memories the moment you feel that you have got carried away bring yourself back to your nostrils and your body sensations there could be some pain you might be feeling any part of the body is just asking for you to give more attention just observe that as you pay attention to your body that pain also observe your breath
might get different sensations just observe them do not analyze them do not hold on to anything just be with whatever is coming up Anywhere you feel some tingling or sudden running of energies, just observe that too. And now breathe in deep and breathe out. Whenever you feel comfortable, stretch yourself, move yourself, and then open your eyes. That was such a such a refreshing experience, you know. Thank so you. powerful, yes. Somebody is texting on the chat that it was so powerful, yes. It was so powerful and you know, it felt like it felt like reconnecting with a long lost friend, you know. Hmm. And the, my when I was doing the meditation, body started moving. Hmm. You know, when I used to do that, I was very regular in my Kriyas. Hmm. Uh, for a while, for a week or two, I've been extremely busy, so I have stopped doing my Kriya. But what sort of vibration I used to feel when I did my Kriyas, that vibration I felt in my body. And this reminds, my body is reminding me to get regular with doing my Kriya, my breath work again. So I'm committing oh. to doing my breath work and my Kriya every day. So thank you for this brilliant, brilliant, uh, you know, body yes. sensing and uh, meditation. Does anybody else wish to share their experience? How was it for you? You can unmute yourself and you can share with doctor how it was for you. Uh, hi, doctor. This hi. is Ranjit's side. Uh, I, I didn't get your name. I didn't get your name. Ranjali. I'm Ranjali. Ranjali, yeah. I saw your name on the... Yes. Yeah. So, well, I had tingling in my fingers. But yeah. since I've just got over with my cancer treatment, so I don't know, I already have that neuro problem. So, is it due to that or could it be due to this? I don't know. Uh, I cannot, I cannot tell you, but even if it is there, even if it is there, you observing will, will start releasing all that, uh, the, the problems with the neurology that you're talking about. Na? Right. It okay. can help. It can help. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because then, regeneration is not a problem. Yeah. Right. Right. Then I had pain in the uh, left side back, left back. Which wasn't there earlier. It came and it's uh, gone also. It was during that period. It was that feeling was there that there's pain there. So that is what I, I, I said uh, sometime back that the body is trying to adjust itself. All right. It is almost like the river. You know, the river is flowing, and okay. then it is the, the 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 sand inside and the banks are all adjusting to the river. Okay. So it is like that. So the whole thing, you will notice it, there's a lot of movements happening. As you become aware, zoom, 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 zoom. It's like, uh -huh. it's like right a, down to the legs also. Yes. Pain, pain down to the legs also. That's, yeah. that's where the draining, draining uh, the discharging of the energies happen. The excess right. energy or the energy that you don't require. And that's how the healing happens, the calming happens, the relaxing happens. All right. I wanted to ask you one thing more that I'm from Delhi and I... Yeah. I do, can this can the therapies happen online or something like that? Yes, Is so I, I do a lot of therapies online. And okay, most of the times I use a lot of course somatic because I have people across the world. So in Dubai, in US, in England, UK I had and in India many places I have. So all of them I do it on the phone only. And okay. showing brilliant results, yeah. 
because this was the second time I had metastasis of the breast cancer. Yes. I had it in 2011. And this time it came in the form of pleural effusion. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. September, I was having treatment, just got over last month. Yeah. So just I got Yeah. But then it can be helped. Okay. And then I'm diabetic also. A lot of problems are added to that. So I'll get in touch with you. Yes, please, Anjali. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely no, program. Lovely. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ranjali. Uh, you know, uh, everybody said on the text, uh, Rajiv sir, people are saying wonderful, peaceful, magical. Jayanti says very relaxing. Payal says it felt wow. Ranu says this was peaceful. Harmi says loved it. Rekha says awesome. Bhavna says feeling great. Sonali says just brilliant. Had a lot of restlessness at times, but it was a great feeling. Rasheshwari says, thank you, Rajiv. It was awesome. Sonali says, thank you, Sanjeev. So much value, Dr. Rajiv and Dr. Sanjeev. Brilliant session. Right? And uh, Mehek wants to ask a question. Mehek has a question about pain. Can we take one last question, Dr. Rajiv? Yes. yes okay. Yes. Come on, Mehek. Hi. Hi, Dr. Rajiv. I just Hi, had a question. I just came to me while after we did this um, uh, guided meditation with you. Um, it was that, you know, usually we're just advised to... Um, uh, ignore like I get constant migraines and headaches so I'm just usually people will say um, you know don't give it so much significance or don't think about it it'll go away or even I mean I would tell even my kids like don't think about it it's gonna go away you know if you think too much about it and here yet it worked for me like to be aware of my body I could see what was happening but how does it fit in like to now you're saying be completely aware of where the pain is and like Ranjali just said there were, her hands were tingling. So you said, okay, be more aware of that. Observe what's happening and it'll um, dispel the charge there. So could you just throw some light on that? Like, uh, why, why are these such polar opposites? So there are two sides to this. Yeah? So first of all, uh, we have been trained over a period of time to not look at something. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, okay, this is happening. Oh, forget about it. Don't think about it. It will vanish. Right. So that's the kind of training that is happening. But look at your own house. Yeah. When you are at home and if there is dirt, what would you do? <laughs> yeah. You don't have to go away by itself. Yeah. You will not go. But at the same time, if you look at the dirt, then you pick up the broom and you clean it up. So you got to look at something, you got to acknowledge it, and then only the cleaning work happens. So when you're observing, the body knows how to heal itself. But it says you pay attention, rest of it I will do. Right. But when you don't pay attention, it will cry louder. That's one of the reasons people who are suffering from headaches at the age of 15, 16, and they start taking tablets, and at the age of 40, they start developing high blood pressure. So there is a definite connect in it. Only thing you will never be able to connect. That's because that time also the pressure was rising or whatever was happening, but you are not doing about anything about it. The emotions were coming up. You were getting angry and you didn't do anything about it. But over a period of time, since you're not listening to the headache, it gives you a high blood pressure. Just to make it much more severe for you so that you pay attention. And if you don't pay attention, then there's a heart attack. And then you say, oh, I got to do some lifestyle changes. So why not pay attention to it when it is right at the beginning that is at the sensation level? Make sense? It, it does. I just have a slight, a, a little bit of an argument here. So like for example, like we consider headaches the most minor of symptoms, right? Like, I mean, you'll say, oh, it's just a headache or something. But for some, it's debilitating, like, you know, you can't move or some suppose it's an ankle pain or a knee pain for some person, but then how about even going before that? How could you even know before that? Even before because, the slight comfort? Because the sensations are always there. That, that the sensations which are, uh, which are not so comfortable, which are painful, they are actually yeah. telling you. Are you getting me? They are actually yeah. telling you that something is, going to, is in the offing. Yeah, like a premonition type of a thing. Yeah. So you got to start paying attention to this. And that's why this becomes, after course somatic, it becomes a preventative to many diseases. Right. Yeah, so you can nip it in the bud with this work. And over okay. a period of time, 
you will be amazed at how your physical body and your mentally how different you feel. Right. So I, I, so don't I, ignore anything. Don't ignore anything. Right. Don't ignore anything. I would not suggest. Whether you have a good feeling or a bad feeling, bad so definitely you shouldn't. But even good feelings you got to acknowledge because then only you'll remain in practice. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that question, Mahek. Uh, that was brilliant. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv, for that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. So, uh, just Sanjeev, so much. Hema has been asking a question on hormonal imbalance. So, Hema, I don't know whether you're listening or no, but then I would like to say that even hormonal imbalance can be cleared. We had this case of PCOD, PCOS, and we did three sessions, and she was not even ready to relate to a guy, not ready to get married, and nothing. 20 year old that time she was and very, very had a difficult relationship with the mother. We did one session and she improved. And in the next session she comes and she says, I think I should be, I should be thinking of getting married. And then she gets attracted means of course, uh, arranged marriage, but she says, I am attracted to this person. And then now she has twins. So, so it is just magical how it works. So hormones and I've worked with thyroids. So it is magical how it works. And according to according to PCOD, the person may has infertility issues. May not have you know they might have difficulty in uh, childbearing. But here she got twins, which is twins. Brilliant. <laughs> and amazing relationship with the mother. Amazing relationship with the husband. Everything just transformed for. And, and she's a psychologist. And she's everything psychologist. everything just by. Uh, being with her body and doing no a body. by the way no medication huh? i'm talking about all this no medications just by working with the emotions and you know yes, yes. And, even, and, and for many of them it is just two sessions or something three sessions or something i asked for more because then we got to see the changes yeah the progress but otherwise yeah so iman Hima, this is for you i give it even helps with vertigo yes it does help with vertigo yeah yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rajiv. Thank you, everybody, for being on the call. I am unmuting everybody. Let's give a big thank you to Dr. Thank you, Mr. Un uh, sorry, I'm un <laughs> unmuting everybody. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mr. Rajiv. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, so Rajiv, much. sir. Lots of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. Thank you. thank you so much. So thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, Dr. Rajiv, see you soon. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. Hi. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.